So greetings, everybody. Welcome to Common Sense's webinar series. Uh, this webinar this afternoon is called Common Sense on Common Core, Meeting Standards in Middle School. And um, we're going to do our best to uh, talk about the sort of complex issue of Common Core and have ideas for you on how you can teach digital literacy and citizenship while meeting um, specific Common Core standards. So um, before we get into the webinar, I want to um, address some housekeeping and uh, make sure that you're able to interact. So let me go forward here. Um, so technology setup. We use a webinar platform that's pretty interactive depending on you know, how interactive you want to be. If you want to sit back and listen, that's fine. If you want to use your mic, you actually have the ability to do so. Um, so just take a few moments to set up your audio if you prefer. Um, one option, so to set up audio, there's a, a menu at the very top um, under Tools called Audio Setup Wizard. And if you want to be able to uh, later in the session ask questions or use your mic to you know, share your experiences and thoughts, I encourage you to do so. The um, only caveat is that you do need to have headphones on and some sort of built-in mic. Um, basically, if you don't have the headphones, we get this weird feedback loop and we hear all of your background noise and um, that's what we recommend. But if, if that's not as important to you to be able to use your mic, then you can always chat in the chat box um, that you'll see as one of the boxes available to you. Um, I definitely encourage you to use that as I'm talking to share your ideas and share your experiences. Um, and then if you can also ask questions in that chat box. You can also use, there's these e emoticons um, from the smiley face, which I just shared with you, to um, applause. I'm going to applaud myself <laughs> um, to you know, approval, disapproval, etc. So feel free to use those as well. Um, they're available to you. And that's about it in terms of setup. So um, why don't we get started? I'm wondering where everybody is from. So why don't we try to use your tools available to you. You should see um, a, a toolbar. And on that toolbar is uh, a pen stroke or a star. And go ahead and mark on the map where you're from. So I'm going to use my star to mark uh, where we are in San Francisco, California. Um, would love to hear where you're from. And you can also put this in the chat box. Would love to hear who's in the room, you know, wh where you're, what school you're at, what you teach. Um, great. Looks like we have someone maybe in Chicago area. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a good way to share where we're all from. So if you see that option, go ahead and put it on the map. Lee is from, OK, great, near Chicago. Welcome, Lee. Neil, I'm from Chicago. Welcome. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get started here. As you know, and as you probably came here with an interest, um, kids are growing up in a digital revolution. And they are uh, spend mo spending more time on Facebook, YouTube, Flickr, Tumblr, texting, blogging, gaming, and watching TV than they do with their school or families. And the latest study on this by the Kaiser Family Foundation found that 8 through 18 year olds spend um, 7 and a half hours a day outside of school with media and in front of a screen. Uh, it's a very powerful force. And so here at Common Sense Media, um, that's one of our main concerns, which I'll, I'll share with you in a moment a little bit more about us if you're not familiar. Um, so schools right now are in the middle of things. They're integrating technology, sometimes in meaningful ways, sometimes you know, uh, maybe it's not so meaningful, but they're figuring out how to use technology effectively. And they're seeing students use technology both in formal and informal ways. Um, so again, for us, these issues are very important. It's up to us to help kids navigate our digital media landscape. And I'm assuming you all um, either um, teach students about these issues or you're interested in doing so. Oh, Warren from Saigon th and Vietnam. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining. So um, 
Another issue then that has come up uh, a couple years ago is the Common Core State, Standard, State Standards Initiative. So I'm going to delve into Common Core a little bit, but basically through our work here at Common Sense Media, we've seen both teachers and administrators having a demand for increased training and instruction on how to teach um, student, how to teach key issues facing students in a 21st century world but how to also meet standards while they're doing so. And you know, with the increasing focus on integrating common and implementing Common Core, it's important to explore the ways in which to teach students digital literacy and citizenship skills in tandem with meeting the standards. So you can approach this in a couple different ways, right? Um, it's a big shift, and schools and districts are figuring it out right now. Um, I encourage you to think of it as just a shift and not a sort of a you know upside down upheaval. Um, this is an opportunity you know for your school and district to come together, discuss how to raise student achievement. It's an opportunity for you as a teacher to grow and reflect on the profession. And um, really, you know, successful implementation of the core is going to come from discussions among you, among teachers, administrators, and maybe I'm assuming you're all teachers. If you're an administrator, um, please do let us know. Um, policymakers and community members, rather than you know, scripts handed down to you, that's that's not um, the core of good teaching is not scripts. It's you um, taking the standards and running with it with what you do best. So I encourage you to view it as, as just a shift. Um, and I kind of like that. I've been hearing that around this sort of common core community um, because it is, it is an adjustment. So today we, I'm going to just give an overview of common core state standards, um, ELA common core specifically. We're not going to address mathematics. Um, and we're also not going to address the um, literacy in history, social studies, science, or technical subjects just focusing on the ELA Common Core um, section of reading, writing, speaking and listening, and language. And then I'll also offer some ideas um, for teaching digital citizenship to meet middle school Common Core standards with some very concrete, specific lesson ideas on, from our existing, um, our existing curriculum on digital literacy and citizenship. So I do want to note that this is just um, recommendations from Common Sense Media. This does not represent any sort of endorsement by the Common Core State Standards Initiative. Um, it's just um, ideas that we have as we're also thinking about how best to um, integrate digital citizenship into Common Core teaching. So you may, uh, just some introduction, you may al already be very familiar or maybe you're a little bit newer to it. But um, what is Common Core? It's basically a um, state-led effort. It's not um, mandated by the government. It's actually state-driven uh, to share a set of clear educational standards for English language arts and mathematics. So the states voluntary voluntarily adopt to it. The standards have been informed by the best available evidence and the highest state standards across the country and the globe. So it really reflecting on aspirations for kids and the realities of the classroom. They're benchmarked to international standards to guarantee that our students are competitive in the emerging global, global marketplace. Parents, teachers, school administrators, and experts from across the country together with state leaders through their membership uh, in the Council of Chief State School Officers, the CCSSO, and the National Governors Association Center for Best Practices, NGA Center. Those two are the leading, um, leading effort in developing the Common Core standards. So why are they important? Um, I, I think one of the number one um, points on that is Again, that last bullet point, preparing students for a global economy, um, giving kids the tools that they need to succeed, and then also having a clear set of expectations that are consistent across states so that teachers, parents, and students can work, work towards them together. All right, a little quiz question for you then. How many states have adopted um, Common Core? And you can maybe think about this. You can enter a guess in the chat box if you like. 
you can star the answer with your um, writing tool or, or write next to it, whatever you think. Lisa C, C, B, B. The correct answer is um, C. Let me see if I can circle this here. 46. The states that haven't uh, adopted would be Alaska, Texas, Nebraska, and Virginia. And Michigan has only adopted the ELA part of Common Core. They haven't done a full adoption. So it's pretty widespread. And um, if I'm assuming you're all in a, in a state or, or in a situation where there's been adoption, and uh, that's why you're here. So in terms of um, how this gets kind of implemented, it's basically up to local teachers, principals, superintendents, and others to decide how the standards are to be met. So the federal government, they weren't involved in the development of the standards. It's, uh, again, very state-led. And um, this, the process of state standard adoptions depends on the laws of each state. Some states are adopting the standards through their boards of education, while others are using um, are adopting them through their state legislatures. Um, so one of the worries about Common Core is it will keep teachers from deciding on what or how to teach, and that's um, not the goal. The goal is to, again, have that clear set of, of shared goals and expectations um, on um, what knowledge and skills students need to succeed. And um, it's the teachers, the principals, the superintendents, and so forth that decide how the standards are to be met. Um, and that's to be decided from the local, local level to the district level. So this is where we come in. Uh, common Sense Media wants to help you reach your Common Core goals while teaching students the important skills to be safe, responsible, and respectful digital citizens. And um, I'm assuming that you may be already familiar with us, but if you're not, we're uh, uh, based in San Francisco. And our mission is to improve the lives of kids and families by providing them the information that they need to thrive in a world of media and technology. So we, we envision a world in which kids grow up to be great digital citizens. They're safe, responsible, and respectful, and harness the potential of um, 21st century skills. And we offer our K-12 comprehensive digital literacy and citizenship curriculum, which can be found at the um, URL below if you'd like to multitask and kind of check that out and browse around. Um, the goal of the curriculum is to empower young people to be good digital citizens. Again, to be safe, resp responsible, respectful when using media and technology. And let me just... Um, dive into that a little bit in case you're not as familiar uh, or you, you haven't dove in it, into it yourself. Um, by digital literacy and citizenship, we see this as a combined effort, um, digital literacy and citizenship, to create um, responsible digital citizens. So digital literacy would be sort of uh, the head of the curriculum, the brain, so to speak. This is really about literacy, um, being able to understand, evaluate, create and analyze digital media. Um, it's kind of an, an information literacy. Uh, it involves critical thinking and analysis. Digital citizenship is more of the heart of our curriculum. This is actually our sort of signature area where we have the most lessons um, and, and we have a very strong focus. And the heart helps kids reflect on how they interact with others appropriately and with empathy. Uh, digital citizenship challenges them to think critically about how they treat others, how they express themselves, how they interact, whether it's with their friends, family, or the larger online community. And then we also have an area, topic area on safety and security. And this is really about um, keeping kids safe. For kids, we want them to learn to protect themselves from anywhere, from anything from avoiding un unwanted contact, um, how to build strong passwords, how to keep their information safe and secure, how to avoid scams, things like that. So these three areas work together um, to create a, a strong digital citizen. The curriculum is um, balanced in tone. It's research-based, flexible, 
and free. So by balanced tone, I mean that we don't take a fear-based approach. We don't think that that's an effective approach. We actually celebrate the great things about media and technology. Um, and, and we talk about the possibilities and the perils with kids. Um, and that speaks to them. It's research-based in that we worked with the Harvard Graduate School of Education to um, develop the curriculum framework based on their research on digital ethics. I encourage you to check that out. Um, and it's flexible, meaning you can start anywhere and you can cherry pick lessons. If cyberbullying is an issue in your school, then start there. Um, if you want to start from the beginning of the first unit in the topic area, then that's a good place to start. But it's very flexible. And then of course, it's at, offered at no cost to educators um, because of our uh, fantastic philanthropic funders, the MacArthur Foundation, Sherwood, and Hewlett Foundations. So Theo is asking, is the curriculum geared towards only ele elementary and middle? No, it's um, actually, Theo, it's a, a full K-12 curriculum. So we have every level, um, elementary, middle, and high school. In this webinar, we're focusing on middle school uh, and Common Core and middle school. But um, we definitely have, have uh, lessons for every grade level. For middle school, um, here are some of the features in terms of um, our curriculum and, and how we reach out to students. First of all, it's student-centered and development, developmentally appropriate. Um, it's not preachy or didactic to students. Students engage in real life issues and they're active, active participants in their learning. They're learning things like ethical thinking, perspective taking, um, how to work collaboratively, how to make decisions, and analyzing. Um, a big part of the middle school curriculum is analyzing case studies, um, which comes into the Common Core um, standards, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, they do things like role play, critical thinking, group discussion. We have powerful videos. Uh, I won't be able to show you video in this webinar, but I encourage you to check out the student videos. We have real kids talking about their real issues. And then the, it's also low tech or high tech. The curriculum itself is actually pretty low tech. You can teach digital literacy and citizenship without any technology. Because what you're, what you're really teaching about is ethics and ethical thinking. Um, and you know, there's opportunities to tech it up. We have a lot of ideas in our lessons, but you can use this in a pen and paper classroom. And then also, um, what we're talking about today, Common Core Aligned. So let's look at that. We offer um, alignment charts. And I'm just showing you a grade 6 alignment chart, just part of the chart here. But if you're really delving into um, meeting certain standards and, and kind of having these discussions at your school and at your district, I encourage you to, to go to these charts and check them out, um, especially if you're looking to um, address certain areas and sort of weave in digital citizenship in, into certain areas like reading, writing, um, speaking and listening, and so forth. Actually, um, why don't I show you this right now so you know where to find them. So I'm going to share my um, screen with you. And we're going to go to um, our website here. OK. All right, so um, if you go to commonsensemedia.org forward slash educators, that's our home page. And um, as you'll see, this will sort of um, launch you into the different areas that we have for educators. Um, our standards and alignment, if you go into the classroom curriculum, you'll see on the left um, the alignment. So let's go ahead and go in there. I didn't mention, uh, although you saw it, that we are also aligned to the American Associ Association of School Librarian Standards and ISTE's NETS standards. Um, but today we're talking about Common Core. So as you'll see, all of the charts are here. And if you go in, like we will with grade 6, you'll have the chart here. So across is um, all of our lessons on the top. Um, you'll see the lesson in, in these um, areas here. And then at the top, we have the, the units here. Um, we have nine units, and then we have all of 
actually this is, yes, the nine units and then the additional lessons. And you'll see um, the different alignment. So I'm going to just um, talk about very specific parts of the alignment today, but that's basically where our um, alignment charts are. And then also I just want to share with you one more thing because we're going to be referring to it. Today, in fact, we launched um, some wonderful videos. So I just went to our online training page for educators. And as you'll see, we have, a, we have an online training that we offer at no cost. But we also just launched today these Common Sense on the Common Core videos. And these are videos featuring middle school teachers um, in the Bay Area and in New York uh, teaching some of our lessons from the middle school curriculum and then also meeting Common Core standards. So I'm not going to show you the videos, but I'm going to be referring to them. And I encourage you uh, after this presentation to check them out. They're wonderfully done. We co-produce them with the Teaching Channel who are known for their um, wonderful uh, video footage and just great ways to tell a story about what teachers are doing in the classroom and then also featuring really inspiring teaching and, and students. So um, that's where that is. Let me go back to my uh, presentation here. Oops. Hold on a minute. Uh, bear with me. I just okay. I gotta stop sharing. All right. I'm getting back to my presentation. Here we go. Okay. So I just introduced the videos again. We we just launched this today. It's really exciting. Um, and we have nine videos total, one per unit of our curriculum. The curriculum has nine units. Um, if you go kind of explore in there, and I listed the web page there. So let's talk, start with sort of the shifts that are going on with uh, Common Core. And um, this slide, uh, a lot of the information is from a site called archivethecore.org. I would encourage you to um, check that out. I'm going to put it in the chat box here. Core. Okay. I found it to be a really helpful resource um, in terms of hands-on tools that help you think about um, integration of Common Core. So in terms of shifts for um, English language arts and literacy, one of the big shifts is, um, is with the text itself. So number one, building knowledge through content-rich nonfiction. There's an increase in informational texts and nonfiction texts. And it's actually um, Common Core um, moves the percentages of how much of those that you address to, um, I think it's from 50-50 at elementary level, 50% 50, uh, 50 um, informational and uh, nonfiction and 50% literary or fiction. And then moving at 75-25 at secondary level. So increasing the 75 would be um, the nonfiction informational. Text. And the reason is, the argument is that kids aren't prepared uh, when they enter high school to really read and analyze and understand informational text, but it makes up the vast majority of what they're reading when they go to college, when they go to the workplace, and, um, and that it's harder for students to comprehend um, nonfiction and informational text and narratives. So that's one of the, the key shifts. Another one is um, reading, writing, and speaking is grounded in providing evidence from the text. So you're looking at, you're, you're drawing specifically from the text, not so much about you know, what you feel or what you think. Um, so I have some examples there in terms of writing. There's uh, evidence-based writing prompts. Speaking and listening, referring to um, evidence, again, uh, on ideas when you're speaking and listening and in reading and writing. Um, so evidence-based thinking, evidence-based writing and reading um, is, a, is a key shift. And then lastly, um, regular practice with a complex text and its academic language. So what students can read in terms of complexity is the greatest predictor of their success in college. 
uh, we have a lot of students reading at a, a too low of a level. And so these standards are including, um, in terms of complexity, the goal is uh, providing a staircase, a spiraling staircase is what they're calling it, to increase text complexity from elementary through high school. And then the, there's also a focus on building vocabulary that's shared across text and across uh, content areas. So one of the key design considerations uh, in developing the ELA is uh, specifically addressing research and media skills. Um, so this is straight from the Common Core standards. To be ready for college, workforce training, and life in a technological society, students need the, the ability to gather, comprehend, evaluate, synthesize, and report on, um, report on information and ideas to conduct original research in order to answer questions or solve problems and to analyze and create high volume and extensive range of print and non-print text in media forms old and new. So um, I'm not going to read the rest of the quote, but the point is um, in terms of research and media skills, from what I've read, um, this is, there's actually more of these skills in the writing component than the reading component. So in the writing component, there's actually a couple standards that speak to writing using digital media and technology. However, um, from what I've uh, read and observed, there's less of this in reading. Um, I would love to hear what you all think about that uh, if you've delved into the standards um, because we're really looking, uh, at least at Common Sense Media, we're really looking to um, harness you know, the potential of, of media skills, digital media creation, using online um, tools to learn and um, to create. So, um, but they were taken into consideration. So the way the standards work is that there's anchor standards and then they're sort of branched out into um, reading, writing, speaking and listening, and language skills. Um, we can go look at the Common Core standards if you'd like, um, but I think I'm, I'm just going to keep going with my slides and I'll encourage you to sort of do that um, on the side or as we go through or maybe you're all already familiar. But basically these anchor standards, um, I, again, will branch out to these different topic areas. And notice that reading is divided up in terms of reading literature and reading informational texts. So um, forgive the sort of uh, information overload on this slide, but I wanted to share with you just some of the key factors in terms of the reading, writing, speaking, listening, and language um, standards that ELA Common Core for grades six through eight address. And ideas on how um, we have activities that um, and skills that meet these sort of standards. Just some ideas on the right there. So you'll see that with reading, again, the focus is really on um, the text itself, really looking at what the text says, analyzing it, um, including more nonfiction and informational texts and so forth. Um, comparisons across different kinds of texts is also a theme, and making inferences and gathering evidence. In our curriculum, we have um, texts in the form of primarily a lot of case studies that address digital citizenship uh, and digital literacy issues that students read and they analyze and they make inferences and they, um, they speak to what the text says. Um, so that's one idea. Um, students also are analyzing websites for trustworthiness and credibility. Um, so that's, again, looking at um, what the text is saying. And then um, a couple of the lessons have students analyze uh, social networking profiles that they're provided in handouts. And um, again, this is looking at a text and they speak to, you know, what did they see, what did they read, and I'm going to show you an example of, of that when we talk about trillion dollar footprint, one of our lessons for um, grades six through eight. In terms of writing, um, there's an increasing focus on uh, logical arguments, writing uh, argumentative pieces with providing evidence, and then also uh, a research component. And part of that research component is online research. So in our research and information literacy uh, topic area, 
We have uh, lessons on research and evaluation on, and on effective online searching. Within the speaking and listening um, area of Common Core, we have a emphasis on comprehension and collaboration with others. The speaking and listening is not just about formal presentations. They also include uh, small group work, informal speaking and listening situations. Um, working with groups is a, a big theme, and working with diverse uh, groups is a theme in speaking and listening. And then also supporting your, your um, ideas and your conclusions with evidence, another theme. And then also incorporating media into your presentation. So in terms of what we offer, um, we have lessons that include a, this speaking and listening is a big area in terms of meeting, um, connecting with our lessons. We have lessons that have a lot of collaboration and discussion among students because they're talking about ethical issues. They're sort of grappling with, with these issues together. They're thinking about um, responsibility and choice and uh, perspective taking. So uh, that's a huge part of uh, our lessons. We also have opportunities for informal uh, discussion and presentation, whether it's just to your group or a more formal presentation um, to the entire class. And we encourage kids to support their ideas with evidence. Lastly, the, one of the topics is language. And although I'm not going to focus that um, on language today, I'll be focusing on reading, writing, and speaking and listening. Um, language is really about not only grammar and um, proper English in speaking and writing, but vocabulary. So a lot of our vocabulary terms are, um, are specific to digital citizenship, but they also can be largely used across the curriculum. And that's a focus of Common Core is that you have vocabulary that's domain specific and that can be used um, across um, content areas. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, I'm going to offer some examples, and then we'll hopefully have time in the end to um, uh, discuss some questions. Um, Kelly Shriver, hello, asks, um, common sense is videos and analysis of videos count towards speaking and listening. Um, you know, I have done research on, on text, and from what I understand, um, Common Core uh, it takes a kind of traditional view of a text as a piece of writing. So if you're talking about analyzing videos um, in terms of reading, writing, um, speaking and listening is another area, but um, I think Common Core says they can be used for comparison when you're looking at a, another piece of text. So don't hold me to this. I'm still exploring. And if you all in the audience have ideas or, or you know specifically um, what Common Core says about video as a text, I would love to hear it because I've been looking for um, resources on that. OK, so the example one, we're going to look at standard. Um, it's reading for, inf for informational texts. And we're going to look at a lesson that specifically addressed, addresses this standard. I've listed um, the standards across the grade levels. You'll see reading and information for grades 6, 7, and 8. But um, notice there's slight differences here. But um, a lot of the standards that we cover um, go through, they cover grades 6 through 8, um, even though this standard might be slightly different. But for the purposes of this presentation, I've focused a lot of them on grade 6 because I needed to focus on one standard and speak to exactly what that says. So in this standard, um, reading for information, students are citing textual evidence to support analysis of what the text says explicitly as well as imp drawing inferences from the text. So I want to show you a lesson where students do this. Uh, effectively, and w this correlates to one of our videos, our um, Common Sense on Common Core videos that I talked about that we did with the teaching channel. So this lesson is called Trillion Dollar Footprint. And you can find this on our the middle school uh, digital citizenship section of our website. But the essential question that students are asking is, what is a digital footprint and what does yours convey? And here are the learning objectives. 
They learned that they have a digital footprint. They recognized that people's um, online information can be helpful or harmful. And they consider their own digital footprints and what they want them to be like in the future. Um, so I'm going to give Brian Van Dyke, one of our teachers that we filmed at Bookster Middle School in Santa Clara, uh, California, to um, showcase how, this, how he did this uh, um, when teaching our lesson. And if you want to watch the video uh, corresponding to this, it's called Understanding the Impact of Digital Footprints. So first, Brian started out by um, teaching some key vocabulary. And you know, up to you, uh, it's up to you on whether you want to front load vocabulary or weave it in. Uh, we find teachers do both. But um, his students were already familiar with dig digital footprint, so he reviewed that. He reviewed some of these key terms, online search, persistent, and imagery. So notice how this, uh, these two terms, digital footprint and online search, are more domain specific to digital citizenship. But the terms persistent and imagery are, can be used across uh, different content areas. That's an example of how our vocabulary is um, addressing that common core issue. So I'm going to kind of walk through the lesson and then I'll highlight when um, students cited textual evidence and, and refer to what the text explicitly says. So you would start by um, intro introducing digital footprint. Brian started by actually Googling himself and showing the results to his students, um, you know, saying, look, um, I have an online presence. I have a digital footprint. He started out that way. Um, showed students a couple of the things online about him. And then um, uh, that was after incorporating the voc vocabulary he taught. And then um, you, then you do the main activity of the lesson, which is called pick a host. So the activity is that um, students are giving a, given a hypothetical situation in which they um, are producers of a TV show called Trillion Dollar Footprint. And they've been chosen to select a host for this show, this new show. But um, in doing so, they're analyzing um, the profiles of two different candidates. And let me go to that. Here are the handouts that students see. But basically, um, they're looking at Linda, Linda's profile, and they're looking at Jason's profile. And um, these profiles, by the way, when you go into the lesson, they're multiple pages long. It's not just this, this one little blurb. I've just given you a screenshot. Um, but basically, students get together in groups, and they're role playing as TV producers. They're analyzing these profiles. But where they're doing this common core work is in the selection. So this is part of the student handout. They're asked to list the pieces of evidence from the profiles that demonstrate the candidate, uh, whether the candidate does or does not have each of these characteristics. And what they're looking for is, is Linda or Jason um, honest and do they work well with others? Or are they honest or work well with others? Where students do the, um, the work on reading an informative text and citing textual evidence is they're filling out this chart. And these are just examples. Um, that I've put in here of what a student might say. But they're looking at evidence based on what the profile says. So for instance, they, might, they found that Linda teaches a cooking class for high school. That shows that she works well with others. But they also found that you know, someone commented that she stole their recipe, and that questions, um, that questions her honesty of whether she's honest. So students are, are reading. They're gathering this information. And then they present their final choice to the class. So um, even though I didn't explicitly mention it, we have some speaking and listening going on here. But you can see that the bulk of the activity here is, again, um, reading the text, citing the textual evidence, supporting what the, what the text says. So they present their final choice. You know, oftentimes the class is divided, um, some like Linda, some like Jason. and um, uh, then you know you can decide if if you actually want to decide on one, or the lesson actually ends by saying, you know what, um, we're not satisfied with either of these candidates. We're going to start the lesson search over, and um, sort of ends that way. 
So then in terms of wrapping up the lesson, we oftentimes have um, informal uh, assessments where you can assess student learning based on questions. So here are some questions that you might ask at the end uh, to help them review. But I hope you can see that that's one example of really students are reading, they're analyzing, they're um, citing textual evidence. So that's example one. Let's move on. Oh, and by the way, this is a really fun extension activity for that lesson. Um, kids develop what they want their digital footprint to look like in 10 years. We have a handout for this. And um, here's an example of a student, what a student might say, that they ran a, mar a marathon in record time, that they won an award, that they went to college, graduated from college, that the president says that they're awesome. Um, just a fun extension activity there. So example two, um, actually I'm going to, um, yeah, I'll breeze through this one. This is another example of reading informational texts. Um, and notice that we're meeting the same standard here that we just talked about, but we also have an additional one that we're highlighting, um, which is determining the meaning of words and phrases as they're used in the text. So let me show you how how this one happens using the lesson called What's the Big Deal About Internet Privacy? So in this lesson, oh shoot, sorry, I have the wrong essential question, but basically students are exploring um, the concept of, of privacy uh, in a real world setting and online. So, and basically the main activity here is students learn that websites are required to post privacy policies and that websites um, track them in certain ways, and that it's important to read a privacy policy. So the informational text here that students are reading is the privacy policy. So we have a video featuring this. It's Melina Johnson at Rancho Milpitas uh, Middle School. If you're interested in watching the whole lesson, I encourage you to, to do that uh, after the webinar. But she introduced the, issue, the topic to the class by a hypothetical scenario by saying, uh, big news, the school has hired a research company to collect information about you to uh, develop a better school. And she goes into this whole hypothetical scenario, um, and students uh, really believe her, <laughs> which is fun. But then she does the big reveal by saying, um, you know, this research company, they're going to hire your, they're going to watch your every move, they're going to, you know, collect information and data about you. Then she says, you know, we're not actually going to do this. Um, yeah, I was just trying to make a point that when you go online, that's exactly what websites do. They track your every move, they see where you go, what you've been doing, and so forth. And that sort of launches the topic of privacy. So then she distributes a handout called What's Private, introduces the vocabulary, um, which includes uh, some words that are, again, not domain specific or domain specific. And students learn about things like cookies. You know, we hear about cookies. It's not something you eat. Yes, it's, some, it's these um, files that track and collect information about the, the sites that you visit and the web pages you view. Um, so they learn these vocabula vocabulary terms, which then in turn, as they analyze a privacy policy, they're looking for these terms in the policy and um, understanding you know, what these terms say. So again, they're using that key vocabulary um, and they're meeting standard, let me go back to the standards here. They're meeting standard, um, they're citing textual evidence to support what the text says. So we, we talked about that. And they're meeting standard 6.4 of reading for information by determining the meaning of words as they're used in a, in a text. And if you've ever read a privacy policy or had the patience or, you know, needed to do so, you know how um, legal, you know, how complicated the language is. But students are grappling with it. And so in this case, Melina had students look at Tumblr. Tumblr is a site that they all, a lot of the students use, and she thought, wow, perfect opportunity for having students um, look at the privacy policy of a website that they go on every day and really look at what does the website do in terms of using, um, giving you privacy options? Do they let you opt out of certain things? Do they, um, how do they use your personally identifiable information? How do they use cookies? 
That's required in every website policy to explain how they use cookies. And then also, do they share information with a third party? How, what do they do? So um, as, they, as they read through this, they fill out their handout um, uh, with evidence based on, on the text. So um, finally, when they're done, they design their own privacy policy. So they think about, well, if you had your own website, you know, what would be your privacy policy? Would you use information in certain ways? Would you, what information would you collect? Um, what would you do with it? Would you um, give your visitors privacy options and so forth? So um, even though I didn't specifically mention writing uh, standards here, we're reading for information, there's some writing standards being met here in, in designing the privacy policy. And then finally, uh, wrap up and assess questions that teachers can ask um, just to assess student learning, including a review of vocabulary terms as we're asking what is a cookie again, what does third party mean, and so forth. All right, let me breeze through another example of how you can address writing. Um, and let me see here. Um, this standard, I'm sorry, this actually should say, and I apologize for this. Uh, let me write it here. This should say, oops, I'm going to mark that out and put the right, the right thing here. Bear with me. This should say W. <laughs> That's what I meant with this standard. Apologize for that. And this should say, this is not reading for information, this is writing. Um, so let's look at an example of how students, part of the writing standards in Common Core is doing research and doing research online and conducting research projects whether they're short or whether they're in depth and um, analyzing and, and evaluating sources. So in this le next lesson, students conduct a short research project to answer a question. They draw on several sources and refocus inquiry. They also, uh, in the next standard, 6.8, gather information from multiple print and digital sources, assess the credibility of each source, um, quote or paraphrase the data, and um, uh, have conclusions while avoiding plagiarism and providing basic bibliographic information. So they're, they're, conduct they're meeting these research standards of the writing component of Common Core. The lesson that, they, that I'm um, sharing with you that does this, although we have several lessons that do it, is the key to keywords. And the essential question here is which keywords will give you the best, the best results? Students learn about the importance of keywords in uh, searching. So uh, I want to dive into the lesson since we're running out of time. In our teaching channel uh, videos, that I introduced to you earlier, we have a teacher from New York, Olga Ramos, at Amistad Dual Language School teaching this lesson and showing you how she's meeting the Common Core standard, standards. And by the way, those, are, those two that I just mentioned, um, let me go back here. These are um, just ones that we're highlighting. We're, this is not saying that the lesson only meets these two standards. Same goes for the other lessons. It's just that we're, we're wanting to pinpoint a couple so you can really see it in action. So Olga starts the lesson by um, introducing the topic. She had a, a tray full of objects here that um, were hidden from other students and she would have a student come up to the front of the room, pick one of these objects and describe the object without saying what it is. So you see that she's, she's getting them prepared and scaffolding um, to um, think about the importance of being descriptive in your keywords and sometimes you have a, a keyword that um, is descriptive in terms of uh, uh, it's not the exact word that you're looking for but you're trying to get the information when you do an online search. So she starts there, then she passes out one of our student handouts called Fetch. And this is, this lesson has great scaffolding in it because students, they get online in partners, um, so this one does required in, uh, require computers for an online search. And she assigns pairs uh, research questions about dogs that are in the lesson. And students, all they're looking for is, uh, based on their research question, the number of results and are the answers found in the first three results. 
And they do this by using one keyword in the first search. Then they do another search where they have two keywords based on the question that they were provided. And then they, they might have additional um, keywords here. But they're sort of learning that you know, the less keywords that you have and the more vague, um, you're not going to get the search results that you're looking for. So for instance, a student might enter in this first search dog. And they're going to get a lot of results, many that don't answer the questions um, that they were, the specific questions that they were provided. Like one example would be, um, you know, how many teeth does a dog have? If by searching dog, you won't be able to find that. So they start there. And then after that, um, they complete, oops, they complete a uh, different handout. And let me go back here. Uh, this is the doggy data handout. So she hands out a, another handout to the partners. And here they are answering specific research questions. Um, and they're, they're, um, li they're uh, listing the keywords that they used and providing the answer to the question and the sites that they got it from. But here they learn they can use however many keywords they want however, you know, whatever kind of description they want. And they'll, they're finding that, you know, more than one keyword is usually better. The more descriptive you can be and the more precise you can be, the better. And that um, you'll get more, this, more of the search results that you're looking for. And she did this in a really fun way as a challenge. She had a timer. And whichever group finished this whole worksheet first, you know, won, won the prize. Won, won the prize of the day. Okay, and again, there's wrap up and assess questions for, for each lesson. Um, so again, students learn the importance of keywords. Finally, one more example is about speaking and listening. So I just want to, um, I'm not going to go through this whole slide here, but um, a lot of our lessons address speaking and listening. And the reason is because uh, in middle school especially, in high school, students are dealing with, their, in our lessons, they're reading case studies, they're watching videos, they're analyzing um, situations, and they're talking about it in groups whether it's an informal, you know, informal talking um, or they're doing presentations to the class on, based on what they think, uh, based on their group discussion. So I want to point out here, collegial discussion um, is a huge, uh, huge part of our lessons. And so we, we are definitely meeting um, at least this first speaking and listening standard uh, 6.1 in collaborative discussions. So a lesson that, um, Oh, here's one more standard in speaking and listening is an interpreting information in different formats that will be addressed in this lesson I'm going to show you. So um, cyberbullying, crossing the line. This is a lesson for middle school that addresses cyberbullying and also um, the speaking and listening standards that I just introduced. So in this lesson, students, uh, we filmed Amy Withers of Amistad Dual Language School in New York film, uh, teaching this lesson. And uh, it's a great, great way to meet some of those speaking in and listening standards in Common Core. So she starts by, um, by asking, what are some of the ways that you and your friends tease each other online? And introducing the vocabulary of uh, some terms that they're learning, harassing, deceiving, flaming, and hate speech. Because in this lesson, students are learning what is crossing the line. Is this cyberbullying? Is this not cyberbullying? Is this just teasing? Was there a misunderstanding? So she introduces there. She has students watch a, a very powerful video called Stacy's Story that is a girl talking about being cyberbullied in her experience with that as a sort of uh, launching into the topic. Um, before she, she has students go to the next step, she does answer some, uh, she does ask some questions you know, based on what they felt and what they saw in the video. She then divides students into groups and hands out the student handout called Crossing the Line. And in this handout, students are reading uh, case studies. And then they're really discussing in groups um, what, they, you know, what they thought in terms of the case study. Was it harassing? Was it deceiving? Was it cyberbullying? Um, and they're, they're sort of grappling with these issues. And there's no 
um, sometimes there's no right answer. It's really an, an interpretation, and sometimes there is really a clear, um, clear answer that there's cyberbullying going on. And you're provided uh, a teacher's guide um, of this handout to help lead student discussion. But um, speaking and listening, again, it doesn't have to be that formal, you know, in front of the class presentation. It actually, this kind of group discussion meets um, several of the speaking and language, speaking and listening standards. And then next, uh, again, we have wrap up and assess ideas uh, in the lesson themselves, uh, oftentimes including lesson uh, questions. So those are just some ideas for you. I encourage you to uh, visit our, our new videos that we just launched today that I introduced in the beginning of the webinar. But these will show you what it looks like in the classroom. So I'm unable to show you video uh, on this webinar, but I encourage you to go watch a couple of these videos, maybe starting at some of the lessons that I recommended. And um, I also encourage you to you know, think about this. This is just a few of the ways to address digital literacy and citizenship while meeting Common Core standards. But um, I encourage you to visit our lessons and the alignment charts to discuss with teachers at your school how you can meet your Common Core goals while teaching this really important topic um, and helping your students be good digital citizens. So just a couple, um, a couple resources for you. We have the Common Core website, Archive the Core, I mentioned that before. Uh, I found that to be a really helpful resource. And then also um, ACSD has some great resources available to you too. Um, I've kind of gone over time, but does anyone have a, a question? We probably have time for a couple questions. And if you do and you have a mic, you can actually press talk and uh, we should be able to hear you. Or you could put a question in the chat box if you're wondering about something. OK. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, that's great. If you do have questions, you can email us at schools at commonsense.org. We are hoping to do a lot more with Common Core um, standards in the future, starting with these videos co-produced with the teaching channel, but um, also making it much more clear to you and offering professional development that um, makes it um, more clear on ideas on um, meeting Common Core while teaching digital citizenship. So if there are no questions, I thank you so much for attending today's webinar. I hope you are leaving with some ideas that you can take back to your school or perhaps your district. And um, again, I don't hesitate to email us if, if you have question, questions, big or small. We are um, very happy to help. So thank you for coming. And um, by the way, this webinar will be, uh, it's been being recorded and it will be archived um, that you'll be able to view again or share with your colleagues. And I'm going to post that uh, to our webinars page. And you can find the archived webinars uh, as you scroll down the page. So again, thanks everybody. Enjoy your afternoon.